This week in Jamaica Now. No PFP council of respect, my money. I have no problem with a man if he want chop. Yeah. Because they chop us during slavery. Yeah. So nothing wrong if we chop them up. Chopped. Everald Warmington and Dennis Meadows faced the heat for controversial comments. Who won? The JLP and the PNP claim victory in Monday's local government elections. The PNP retakes control of the prized Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation. And Adam Stewart faces losing a significant say in the operations of the Sanders Hotel chain. I'm Jovan Johnson and this is Jamaica Now. The Electoral Commission of Jamaica is reporting that the ruling Jamaica Labour Party won seven of the 13 parishes up for grabs in the local government elections. The PNP won five. The Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation ended in a tie, but the PNP will get to select a mayor because it won the popular vote. The JLP will get the deputy mayor position. In the last local government elections in 2016, the JLP won nine to the PNP's four. The PNP's Leon Thomas retained his position as mayor of the city municipality of Portmore, which is within the parish of St. Catherine. The ECJ released the final results on Friday. The JLP has the leadership of corporations in St. James, Trelawney, St. Anne, St. Thomas, Clarendon, St. Elizabeth and Portland. The PNP picked up St. Mary to go along with Hanover, St. Catherine, Manchester and Westmoreland. The ECJ said the voter turnout on Monday was 29.6%, slightly less than the 30% recorded in 2016. Now, hours after the preliminary results were announced, Prime Minister Andrew Holness claimed victory, but said his party had work to do. The Jamaica Labour Party has won the uh, municipal elections without question. There are, however, issues that have come up in the campaign which the government has been seized of and recognizes. And I think the people have, in their wisdom, found a way to communicate these issues through the ballot to the government. The government cannot ignore this. As we went around the country, every member of parliament, every councillor contesting the election would have come up on the issues of roads and water. And the PNP president, Mark Golding, who was leading the party into its first electoral contest since he took over the position, also claimed victory. We have shown that we have the capacity to deliver, to execute and to achieve victory. And my heart is full because the PNP has come back as a strong, powerful force in this land again for the masses of the people and all Jamaica. We can go forward with confidence. We have pulled off a great victory today. The people have spoken. The PNP is alive and well and strong. I want to dedicate this victory to Sister P, Mama P, and the And there were some notable or even shocking results on Monday night. Giovanni Byfield, a first-timer to representational politics, created a major upset beating the JLP's four-term councillor and deputy mayor to take the Gale division in St. Mary Western. The constituency is represented by chairman of the JLP, Robert Montague. Over in Manchester, long-time JLP councillor for the Christiana division in Manchester Northeastern, Desmond Harrison, lost to the PNP's O'Neill Evans. Audley Shaw is the MP. JLP MP for Manchester Central, Rhoda Moy Crawford, lost all four divisions in her constituency, including Knock Patrick, which was held by the JLP. The PNP's Carl Smith won. The Kintyre division in St. Andrew East Rural fell to the PNP, which helped it to gain control of the KCMC. The JLP picked up some key divisions, including Ainon Town in Clarendon Northern. Marjorie McLeod gave the JLP its first win in decades. Jeremiah Edwards led a JLP victory in the Ginger Ridge Division in St. Catherine West Central. The JLP's Damara Lawson won the Southborough Division in St. Catherine East Central by just three votes over the PNP's Everton Shakes. And in some highly anticipated contests, Venetia Phillips and Kara Douglas, who switched to the JLP, both lost in Papine and Trafalgar Divisions, respectively. Romaine Morris, who joined the PNP after a fallout with the JLP, won the Mucker Division, retaining the division he won in 2016. 
Mr. Morris had a spat with Robert Morgan, the JLP MP for Clarendon North Central, in which Mocker falls. In an interview on Nationwide Radio in January, Mr. Morgan made this vow after Morris left the party. Election has to be called before the end of February, so I suspect that he will be enjoying his time as councillor for the next eight weeks, and after that we'll have a new councillor. What I want to say is that there were some people who gathered in Maypen today. Moko consistently has 800 PNP votes. The JLP in Moko in my last election got 1,400 votes. Moko is a JLP division. The persons who you saw in Maypen today are comrades from Woodall, comrades from Moko, and several other places. They could not mobilize enough people from Moko. What it says to you is that the people of, the, of Moko do not believe in Romain Morris. Romain Morris has crossed the floor, which is his right. But I will say to you as Member of Parliament, he will never win Moko Division as long as I am a Member of Parliament, and I have put that down. Meanwhile, Garfield James and Ian Miles, who left the PNP for the JLP, won their divisions in Westmoreland. And the conduct of the elections has come in for scrutiny. The election watchdog group Citizens Action for Free and Fair Elections, CAFE, complained that its observers were blocked by Election Day workers from entering some polling stations. Director of Elections Glasspole Brown acknowledged some of the challenges and said there would be a review. There were also complaints about the timeliness of the results. And a man was arrested after allegedly being held with a loaded gun on the compound of a polling station in Olympic Way, St. Andrew. The police say the man was searched after he was seen acting in a manner that aroused the suspicion of the security forces. Politicians Everald Warmington and Dennis Meadows lost key positions this week after facing public backlash over controversial comments that came to light in the aftermath of the local government elections. Mr. Warmington resigned Thursday as Minister with Responsibility for Works. Now, this was Mr. Warmington on Monday after learning that the PNP's Dr. Kurt Wall won the Old Harbour South Division in his St. Catherine Southwestern constituency. This is right now, I'm the Minister of Work. I'm a member of Parliament. Now, PNP comes to the spend my money. Mr. Warmington initially issued an apology saying his comments were misunderstood. The PNP's Dennis Meadows was sacked as the party's MP caretaker for the Trelawney Northern constituency for making these comments about lottery scamming. And I speak to the youth man them for the corner, you know. Especially one who call themselves Chopper. Yeah. 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 Let me tell you straight up. I mean, can speak openly. I have no problem with a man if he want chop. Yeah. Because they chop us during slavery. Yeah. So not the wrong if we chop them up. <laughs> My only problem with the chopping is when you bingo and you score. Use the money wisely. Yes. Set up yourself. Yes. Open my business. Yes. Make sure mommy look good. Yes. Make sure your baby mother look good. Yes. But don't take the money and use energy and wash car. Yes. And use your dollar light cigarette. Alright. Full full business now. True. There's a reason why money is called liquidity. Yes. It liquid. And if you don't tie it on your hand, you it will go to your hand no matter what you have. Yes. So not no wrong with what you are doing. Mr. Meadows also issued an apology and withdrew the comments. The Jamaica Chamber of Commerce, the National Integrity Action, the private sector organization of Jamaica, Jamaicans for Justice, and the Jamaica Accountability Meter Portal all condemned the comments from Mr. Meadows and Mr. Warmington and demanded strong action from the Prime Minister and the opposition leader. And the Integrity Commission says Mr. Warmington's comments will be discussed at its next board meeting on March 4. The Anti-Corruption Agency says the matter has been placed on the agenda as it concerns the integrity of a parliamentarian and relates to governance of the country. Board Chair Retired Justice Seymour Pandon says despite Mr. Warmington's resignation from the Cabinet, the issue will remain on the agenda as the Commission cannot stay silent on the matter. In some other news, a disputed last wish made by late hotelier Gordon Butch Stewart would strip his son and executive chairman, Adam Stewart, of a significant say in the Sanders Hotel chain. According to Butch's common-law widow, Cheryl Hammersmith Stewart, the wishes give the late mogul's United States-based family, as a unit, the largest stake in the company. That's according to court documents seen by the Gleaner. Adam has raised serious doubts about what he called the alleged wishes of his dad. 
The 42-year-old Sandals Resort International is the leading all-inclusive hotel group in the Caribbean and is key to tourism-dependent economies in the region. In Jamaica, it's one of the largest private employers and foreign exchange earners. Now, Butch reportedly gave instructions just before his death that the shares of asset-holding companies in two Bahamian trusts be transferred into five newly established trusts for his family. That means one trust for his U.S. family, Cheryl and their three adult children, Gordon, Kelly and Sabrina, and one trust each for the Jamaican family members, Adam, his sister Jamie Stewart McConnell, and brothers Brian Jardim and Robert Bobby Stewart. Bobby supports Cheryl's position. The shares would be transferred on a proportional basis, the U.S. family getting 42%, Adam 16.67%, Bobby 16.67%, Jamie 16.66%, and Brian 8%. These issues have come public after Adam and his siblings who support his position lost their bid to keep a lawsuit filed in the Bahamian courts private. In September 2021, Cheryl Hammersmith Stewart filed a lawsuit for the removal of the trustee of the trust, Cromwell Trust Company, on allegations that it was involved in conflicts of interest and may not implement Butch's wishes. Now, Butch included a provision in his wishes for the disqualification of beneficiaries who challenge his wishes in court. The Bahamian courts have ruled that Cheryl's claim is not a challenge of the wishes. Alexei Zaitsev, the Russian charged with the four counts of manslaughter in relation to a crash on the Palisados main road in December 2022, has been granted permission to leave Jamaica and return to his homeland for one month starting March 1. His attorney, King's counsel Peter Champagny, argued Thursday for the passport to be returned and stated that his client would arrive back in Jamaica on April 1. Justice Leighton Pusey gave permission and said the passport should be returned to Jamaican authorities on April 2. Zaitsev is to return to court on December 2, 2024. The early morning crash on December 11, 2022 claimed the lives of 57-year-old Rosemary Roberts Banton, 18-year-old Zachary Heslop, 53-year-old taxi operator Delroy Grant and Camille Stevenson Grant. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. Follow us on X, formerly Twitter, and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner, and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page, turn on your notification, and subscribe today. I'm Jovan Johnson, and before we go, let's look back at some of the scenes from this week's local government elections. Oh, 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 oh,